sleep. So I've currently been working on an afterlife inspired sound set for you guys. And as I've been doing this, I've had to learn how to create melodies like Anima, Kassian, butchering names here, in order to create sounds that will work in your music. Today's video, I want to show you guys some of my findings and what I've learned from making melodies like the afterlife, guys. The first one that I see a lot in this genre, but also all over the dance music world is ratcheting. Not to be confused with getting down and dirty and twerking, but what you want to do is you want to set up a melody, a rhythm. We're going to go into a 116 format and we're going to set up a rhythm. And you're going to hear this a lot at the beginning of a drop. In techno, a lot of artists are using it as a pre-drop as well. Now from here, what you want to do is you want to ratchet now. And the way you ratchet is you're going to go right click and hit 132. And from there, you're going to find spots that you feel the ratchet will benefit. But the effect this creates is... From there, add a melody to it. A lot of the times, you don't want to move around too much. Use the friggin' scale. So here we are in minor. We can go into a friggin' scale, which sounds rather weird. But all I know is I call it the badass scale. Because you're allowed to play this one semitone up from your root note, which creates a badass vibe. For instance, here... Suspended chords are dope, and as melodic techno starts to look at trance and start to utilize a lot of these trancey techniques, suspended chords will become your best friend. So for this one, I'm going to use the Save Me Chords patch. We have chords ranging from 1 through 6 or 1 through 7. 1 being your root note, the name of the scale. But from there, watch what happens. So here I have a D sharp, and I'm going to do the blue B scale, the blue B chord. But if I get rid of this and I start to move this guy in the middle up or down, then I'm creating a suspended chord, which has a lot more tension. It sounds a lot more dark. So what I can start to do is, let's just, for the sake of the tutorial, just do this rhythm. I could do something like. creates a lot of tension it makes it feel like we're about to take over the world and and you know just go ham so now i could do something like and now we can implement some ratcheting as we know before <laughs> Let's have fun with this music production should be fun guys don't take it serious We have the ratcheting at the end. So nice. I don't want to get copyrighted, though. Pitch bands is another technique that the Afterlife guys, melodic techno guys that are really doing great, utilize really well. But for this one, you need a sound designer like me, or you need to learn how to make the sounds yourself. So here we have a patch that by itself I mean, sounds cool, but it sounds kind of lame until we add the pitch bands. Now, you could do this inside of MIDI. But what I prefer to do is use, again, the synth to program it in. Now, at the bottom left of Serum or any synth, you're going to find a bend range. And, and the location of this will differ depending on the synth you use. But the bend range allows you to control what this knob is going to. So if you wanted to go to the perfect fifth, you could do that, plus seven. <laughs> Uh, okay, but for this one, I want to put the top highest at one, and then I'm going to put the bend range going down at minus three. And the way that you program that is the powerful. In combination with the sound design of a sound, pitch bends work really well, and it's something that I've been hearing uh, in a lot of the tracks. A great way to program pitch bends is inside of the matrix utilizing an LFO, for example. This one here, we utilize the technique of routing our LFO to the fine of our oscillators, which is going to be a very weird section of pitch. For example, if you have a G and a G sharp, in between that, there's what we would call the out of key um, range. And that is where we want to be at with, example, this sound. Okay. Because as you can hear, we're not really bending past the note, but we're getting this to sound out of key on purpose to create tension, to create darkness. And that's what Anima does really well with this siren sound. 
Bum, bum, bum. Another technique that I see a lot, and this is something that anybody can use, is knowing the scale, knowing what part of the scale creates the mode, the feel of the scale, and abusing it, okay? Um, now, in a minor scale, this is usually going to be in the 2 and the 6. And the reason for that is if we look at the D-sharp scale, we're going to have our D-sharp, then we're going to have our E. Notice how we're going one, two steps. Now, from here, there's going to be a section where we go what we would call a half step up, and then we're going to do a whole step. That's two, a whole step. That's two, and then again, a half step. So these sections are the only places where you're going to see the change between a black to a white note or... And that is what creates tension and that, that's what creates that revive. So when creating melodies, a lot of the times. And from there, I like to assign notes. Now, if I'm trying to go for something darker, then obviously I'm going to want to abuse that section here or abuse this here. For example. And now let's put this. Now I can move with some of the notes at the end to create a bit of variation. And from here, I can use the sounds, good sounds, and evolve them. And that's what makes these tracks work really well because you'll get something like... From here, I can also abuse that second one here. See how I revolve around a lot that now these are theories. Again, these are like things to help you make melodies. From there, there's always exceptions. You can break the rule. You can do certain things, and that's what leads to it. But whenever I'm freestyling, people ask, well, how can you come up with melodies so fast? That's because I understand these little theories that I learned from, again, my sound design career, from trying to find out how these guys make their melodies so I can make sounds that work really well for you guys. Octave jumps are another really good technique that's being used, and I call them trance gallops, but they work so well, so well, because check it out. If I'm playing a D sharp with a really good sound, and I jump. I mean, that's proper programming. So usually in a synth, you're going to have your mono legato here. If I turn this off, I am going to lose a bit of that. So if I turn the mono legato on, which is going to make, and the always, which is going to make the notes glide, that just means they're going to be lazier. It's going to take longer to get to that pitch. I get that mm, mm, mm to it. From here, we can utilize an ARB to do an, a technique that's actually done by Hardwell in one of his new tracks. But what we do is we set up an arpeggio that's going up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a chord feature from Ableton and utilize this chord so that we can play up one octave from the note we are on. And this is going to create a trans gallop. But here, you become more of an ARB. <laughs> My goal with this video was to give you guys some dope techniques to hopefully spark that creativity so that you can start making music again. And hopefully some of these inspire you to make a track. I mean, they're all sick. The most important thing with these techniques is to have the right sound, sounds that sound good. If you guys enjoyed any of the sounds in this video, you can check out my sound design work over at evilsounds.com. The sound bank I'm using is not out yet. It's going to be out next week. So be on the lookout for it. If you guys want to continue your knowledge forward, consider watching this video on how Medusa processes their leads. I think it's very similar to how the Afterlife Melodic Techno guys do it. I mean, it's the same ballpark. And it's very interesting to see how much post-processing they do. But I learned a lot from the video, and I hope that you guys do as well.